Right, IAB learners, now we are looking at phase two. And let's see what phase two now needs us to do. We've already done phase one. We've looked at everything. Everything's okay. And now we are checking out what they want. And they have here task one. So I just want to go to the assessment and just see. There's also task one, access information and determine relevance. And then there's a second part to this. Task two, use the information and planning. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, they mentioned to us here in completing this task, you'll have to provide the following evidence for each question. Which question? Let's read. When I access the information and provide evidence of the sources found. You remember that from phase one? Right? Uh, you want to indicate how the information will be used and why. So these sources, if you'll remember from phase one, um, some of us mentioned our methods and sources as in the internet, um, magazines, whether it was a newspaper, whatever the case may be. Now you want to make a summary and highlight the important facts or add comments to this. And then you will screen dump uh, or screen dumps of copies of information found must be included in your document. So you are now going to take those same questions and you're going to answer them with evidence. So for example, if you used um, the, the internet, you're going to have to put in the link, you're going to have to put in a little screenshot of the website. If it's a server, you're going to have to put, you know, a screenshot of that, of the results, whatever it is. If they want us to indicate how the information will be used and why it will be used to answer each question or part of a question posed in phase one. So you are using those questions from phase one in phase two, and now you need to access that and provide evidence for it. Write down the answers to your questions in your own words or highlight text and indicate which questions it will answer or partly answer. You also need to indicate how you will determine whether the information is usable, right? Um, has the website, for example, been updated recently? Um, is there proof of the authenticity of the source, right? How good is the source? And then you'll have to have a reference list. And they want here, they say in bold, a full reference list should be provided at the end of the task. Then at the end of this particular part of phase two, they show us a table and there you see for this particular question, what type of source was it? What is the answer to the question? Is there evidence? Is there a screen dump? Reference to the appendix, whatever it is, how and why will the information be used? Citation of reference and the proof of authenticity. So I'm going to look at um, an example that I have um, of a previous one. And you know, I like to throw this up so that you guys can see exactly um, what we are talking about. And I'm going to look at a phase two template. Uh, here's an example. Um, your phase two, task one and two. So you're going to be breaking it up into different sections. Um, you need to now also indicate what software you are going to be using. So in this case, we're talking about word processing, right? And you'll start it. And again, this is just a template saying in Microsoft Word, I will be creating blah, blah, blah. And we've got what we are creating in Microsoft Word. So maybe your, your survey, your questionnaire, you are creating in Microsoft Word. Maybe you're creating a booklet in Microsoft Word. And then we'll be looking at the category, the resources, the citation, how you're going to be integrating um, the survey into Word, and then your questions and answers. Now you can see that's slightly different to what they have here. Guys, you can do it any way you want to. This is just, um, it's just a, okay, so that you can see uh, what you need to do. Then same thing for spreadsheets, and databases as well. Now, if you're not sure about the Harvard referencing, please, um, you can use sites like the harvardgenerator.com. 
um, to help you actually do that referencing and understand how uh, you need to do that. Alternatively, there are videos on the channel that deal with referencing, okay, and how to do that. All right. So you can see that's the first part, and let's just go to the rubric. The first task, the evidence of the questions and information, evidence of the sources, important facts that you found there, um, evidence that the information is suitable. So for example, if we look at this, here is a website and we want to look at the validity of the website. So every website must have its validity verified. And there you can see, maybe it was under the category of accommodation. You went to this particular site and there's a screenshot of it. And this is how we verify, right? That's on the websites. We're looking for example, by reputation, Fly SA Fair is well known, so it's trusted. It has a date that's been updated. Okay, you can see the difference 2017, 2019. Um, the other mention to us, you can use Control and F and search for an update or just scan the very top and bottom of the home pages. The validity is unknown. If you can't find any form of validity, you can put validity unknown. Okay, so that is what they want you to do when you are referencing a uh, website okay and this you have to do for each and every website that um, you are going to be using right and scrolling through our reference list so task one just to put all of that in place this table everything that goes with it and then like i showed you um popping it into whether you're going to be using Word, Excel, database uh, that you need to make sure you're having. So you're going to be putting word process and you're going to have a little paragraph over there and then you're going to be doing your table um, and then spreadsheets as well. So you need to work out for yourself when it comes to these questions and the answers. What are you going to be doing with those answers? Are you putting that into a Word document? Are you putting it into a survey? Are you putting it into a spreadsheet? Um, whatever it is, you will then have to uh, just group it accordingly. Then task two, or the second part of this, is the planning. Okay, and they mention here completing this task, you'll have to start planning the final solution by creating a framework, in other words, a mind map, right? So you need to create some sort of mind map, storyboard, whatever it is, looking at how you are actually going to get to the final um, solution to your particular problem. If you look at the example of going green and I think they were talking about looking at load shedding and water shedding, then you need to plan out now, how are you going to get to that final solution? How did you identify the problem? How are you going to put the solution in place? Um, so like you would do a mind map and what some of my learners have done is they've actually like sort of drawn this out on a page and they can always scan it in and add it. Um, or you can just, use another program insert shapes you know use powerpoint whatever you want to use in order to actually create this but you need to do that you need to indicate in detail how the applications will be used in at least two packages spreadsheets database and a third package right so at least two packages now most of us are going to be using word um, we are going to be using um, spreadsheets as well i've always had this question between database and the um, powerpoint package now it it's it's entirely up to you but what happens is we mark uh, three of these and we take the highest mark from two of the three okay in some cases i just want to check as we go through i know sometimes they want you to use database then they also want you to run a spell check and give evidence of that and here you can see, you see, here they mention again, the purpose and use of at least two of the following applications. The thing is, this document is already in Word. So they don't want to, they, they know how you are using Word. Now you have to show them. Spreadsheet, database, presentation. You know what you are strongest in. So what some of the learners have done is they've created like a spreadsheet and then they take 
everything they have and they put it into a presentation um, or web page and um, because they want only two of the following they get their marks from that right and that is phase two so let's go and have a look at the rubric task one we said important facts this is all to do with your table your planning have you provided evidence of a framework are you planning your final solution the report has a purpose is clearly stated and appropriate um, the integration between applications is clearly indicated how are you going to get these applications to integrate with one another maybe you're going to take the spreadsheet and import it into access maybe you're going to take the spreadsheet and import those things into your powerpoint presentation and link it back to the excel spreadsheet is the document accurate in other words have we got the spell check grammar check in place and have you handed it in on time doing that will make sure that you've got everything you need for phase two of your 2023 IEB pet.